it, Shepard. Hell yeah. What can I do for you? Um, some. Can you tell me something about yourself? That's a story, Rex. There's no story. Oh. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. Come on. You Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was Jesus. They tried the same with us, but we fought them off. It's not the same. Uh, it isn't? It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? Aww. An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I see your point. Chill, chill. The same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Um... Yeah, sorry, dude. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. Well, that's a uh, bad start. Us, but it's not what's killing us. Uh, what's killing you? Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. So? Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. How about you? We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. Right, right. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. Unlike yourself. Uh, tell me about the Genophage. What can you tell me about the Genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. Who are Salarians again? Oh, that's oh, Tally people, maybe? It makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Damn. Every Krogan is infected. Every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Say what? Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? Uh... You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. I see. So long, Rex. Shepard. Good talk. Let's see how Stally doing. Uh, hey, Adams. Hey, Commander. You know that Quarian Tally? She's yeah. been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. Uh, okay, I'll talk to her. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I oh? wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got nice. a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. Um... Yeah, yeah, she's useful. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You got an eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Uh, yeah. T tell me about yourself. Where else have you served, Adams? You name a class of Alliance ship, I probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo. Tokyo? Only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. Okay. Tell me about uh, our ship. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably nice. the fastest vessel ever designed. And she's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. Uh, what's a Drive Core? What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, we can run at FDL speeds longer before we have to discharge. Hey, the core. I played that game. Uh, how about our stealth systems? Fill me in on the IES stealth systems. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours.
hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hulls. So we are invisible? There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. And that gives us away. Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. Nice. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Hey, Tally. I heard you're uh, the pilot's favorite. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. But this small? I'm what sorry are you talking to understand about? why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. Uh, well, this ship is special. The Normandy's a prototype. Cutting edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. Deep. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. Ah, uh, you're into ships? I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. Nice. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. Uh, 300 years ago? We can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make our I like how she talks. There's the, the hull and light blinking in her mouth. Materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Uh, tell me about... Tell me more about this pilgrimage of yours. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among Is that what you're doing now? But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something oh. of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain what, of the respective ships we wish to join. What sort of gift are you looking for? Accepted, what's what's valuable? Into the crew. Uh, it's a deal. Did the captain accept? choose to reject the gift? Uh, that doesn't happen often. <coughs> Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. Oh, so we don't really care what the gift is. We just uh, say that because Even it's when tradition. Even not particularly valuable, the captain usually yeah, accepts yeah. it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. Uh. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. Sounds dangerous. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla, and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Implants? Generations of like living plastic in an isolated surgery? and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, let's talk about something else. Though. I want to talk about something else. Like what? Like Geth. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. 
All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Uh, elaborate, please. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Okay. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. My, the Skynet, um, that was a mistake. You had to know it would blow up in your face. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or I'm so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. Uh, what's a neural network? So, the Geth share brain power? Oh. Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. Oh, that's interesting. So there's some sort of group consciousness. No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But, when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. I get it, I get it. Um, so, why did they turn on you? What made them rebel? As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, yeah. more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer, questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. And what happened next? What did you do? It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up yeah, against us, kill them. so we acted first. Most of them, the I just kept them separate from the, the living ones. To permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. Oh, what did you expect? You didn't really think they'd just let you destroy them without a fight, did you? The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. I think you can see her eyes. The war eyes. was long and bloody. Oh yeah, yeah, she's blinking. Millions of Quarians died at their hands. And her nose. In the end, we were forced to flee our Thought own home. she was home. like a robot. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. Sir, is you right? Um. Well, yeah, I just defended themselves. It's hard to feel sorry for you. Your ancestors tried to wipe out another species. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place, but we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. No. Yeah, I guess it's Why do you think them? they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You make a good point. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get so worked up. Most Quarians tend to have pretty strong opinions about the Geth. Uh, well, yeah, speaking of quarries. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million quarians in the flotilla, and That's each a lot. of us relies on the others for survival. 17 million. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. There's only like 3 million people, even less actually. Well, yeah, because they migrated. Um, and the Voina. Uh, wait, what did you say? You have to surrender. What did you ask to surrender? What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. 
What? If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Jesus. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single Third birth is temporarily problems. repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. Conclave sounds like Conclave. That's your government. The Conclave is our <coughs> civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative and this to serve is on the president and make Eden. decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, Conclave the is our future. Has the final say. It's a tradition Don't that dates trust back to the, the Brotherhood of Steel the and those raiders. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give Conclave them advice and guidance. the future. You're, uh, democratic? So the ultimate power rests with elected officials. In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking politics, politics, politics. serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Cool. Well, uh, thank you for uh, the cool talk, Tally. See you later. See ya. So, we met our uh, crew members. Oh yeah, we have to talk to Joker. And I think that's, that's all of them, right? Wasn't there a cook here as well? Maybe it wasn't the second one. Isn't there something here? Oh, it's a, yeah. No, that's good. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Loading. Okay, let's go talk to Chopper, I guess. He's funny in the second one when there's a. Uh, that robot. Eve, I think it's called. And they just, you know, mess around with her. Hey, Joker. Commander, something you need? Uh, status report now. How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. And I guess you Balance know how to handle her. Expect. It takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. Nice. Tell me what you're I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I'm the best damn helmsman in the Alliance. I didn't do a Top check of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. Uh, what? What are you talking about? Are you sick? <laughs> you mean, you mean you didn't know? Oh crap. Well, uh, now I'm okay. interested. Okay, I've got Vrolix syndrome. Brittle What's bone that? disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow. Too much force and they'll shatter. Jeez. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic. But I've learned so to manage you my just conditions. sit in a seat? Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance. All day, every her. day? Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. Uh... uh... Just tell me more about this I need disease. to know more about this Brolic syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. Yeah, of course you do. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures. Hip, thighs, ankles. My bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred Jeez. years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. So, uh, 
Oh, how do you do your job? I'll be just sit there You're and do it. You're not gonna break right? a bone trying to fly the ship, are you? Uh, I don't fly with my feet, Commander. So I'm fine as long as I'm in this chair. I gotta be real careful when I get up to take a piss, though. Aww. I can do my job as well as anyone on the ship. Better, actually. So don't worry about it. Okay. Good I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you want, Commander. Joker? How'd you get that nickname? Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. Yeah, right. I was just thinking how much you remind me of Santa Claus. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, hmm, and it stuck. Uh, unhappy childhood? Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than Show the instructors, off. everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. <laughs> um didn't know where they talk about person. Okay, well. How'd you end up joining else? the Alliance? Look, if you're looking for an inspirational tale of the crippled kid overcoming impossible odds, you're gonna be disappointed. My mother was a civilian contractor working for the Alliance. I basically grew up on the Arcturus station back when they were building up the fleets. Spend all that time around Alliance ships, there's a good chance you'll end up going to the Academy. Okay. Well, yeah, thanks, Joker. I have to go. Alright, see ya. I have to go pee. Uh, anyway, uh, let me check. So we have... So those are kind of like passive quests, you know, just find the emblems. Um... Eight scammer. So we have one, two. What's this? Oh yeah. Yeah. So we have two missions to do before doing the main quests. But I think I will end it here and uh, continue on uh, like later on. So uh, yeah. In this episode, we. Finally left Citadel. We got our new ship. Well, it's an old ship. Well, is it old? I don't know. We've been on the ship before, but now it's ours. Yes, and you have to do this every time I walk past you. Because you're my bitch. And uh, yeah, we did a side quest. And uh, now we will, or in the next episode, we will continue doing side quests. Do a few main missions, go back to Citadel to shop around, sell things, and yeah, all that other cool stuff. So, uh, yeah, uh, tune in next time in Mass Effect. Bye bye.